Hey, I wanted to welcome you, you great people who got on time. I love that when that happens. Usually about five minutes after is when the influx of everybody comes. I'm Monica Reynolds, and we're going to get started here. I'm just watching the time. We've got one more minute. We'll get started. There is a question box, and I will go really fast. These slides will be available to you, and also you'll get another recording of this call one hour, about approximately one to two hours after this call. So don't fret. But if you do have a question, put it in the question box. I'm not sure I can answer all the questions. I'll do my best and we'll go from there. So we're gonna have a fast paced call and in about 30 seconds or so, Miss Angel from the MAPS department will welcome you and we'll get started. So this is the foundational piece, but you'll hear, you'll hear my story on how, why I know how to do this right. And Stephanie on this call was part of that whole thing too. So she knows all about the seventh level and how to do it right. Okay, just a little bit longer. Remember questions in the question box. And if you don't get your question answered and it's burning, you can go to monica at kw.com, M-O-N-I-C-A at kw.com. I'm happy to answer your questions. All right, okay. I have bottom of the hour, so Miss Angel, take it over for a few seconds here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Monica. And hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, First Step to a Seventh Level Team, the Perfect Real Estate Assistant with VP of MAPS, Monica Reynolds. Please note this webinar is being recorded, and you will automatically receive the webinar recording. If you have questions from your coach, please type them into the questions box located in your webinar taskbar. Following the webinar, if you have any questions about today's call or coaching programs, please email us at maps at kw.com. That's M-A-P-S at kw.com. That's all for me, Monica. Take it away. Thank you, Ms. Angel. I appreciate that. And I've got Stephanie on the call. So let's go to the next slide, Stephanie, and let's get started with this great program. So again, I'm going to share with you I will go fast, don't get frustrated. You'll get a copy of the recording. You'll get a copy of the PowerPoint also. Put your questions in the question box. I will stay a little bit longer and answer those. So we're supposed to be done at the top of the hour, but I'll go a little bit over to help any of you out. So let me share with you real quickly that um, Stephanie also on this call um, was one of my assistants. I had five of them. I had a team that I ran for the Rainmaker where he netted $1 million a year. I took the listings, I ran the team, did the hiring, put the systems into place. And every year for seven years, he netted a million without coming into the office, maybe once a year. Um, did I have a call with him once a month and go over the P&L? Of course, but that was pretty much it. So I know how to build the foundational pieces and prior to that, I coached that Rainmaker for seven years. And so the systems that were in place were systems that I always teach and preach and say, these are the foundational pieces. So you can build a seventh level team. It doesn't take 25 years to do it. However, there are critical, critical steps. And so I'm gonna talk about four of the building blocks today. There's a lot more to this system than just that. But you, in, in, if you're listening to this call and you have a team in place, Let's just reevaluate who you've got. It's critical to have the right people in place to go to the next level. So let's talk about the first brick, Stephanie. Let's go there. So let's make sure you, the agent, you know, as you're listening to this call, you know, when you're working toward building the different levels, you've got your lead generation system in place, your listing appointments, lead follow up, writing contracts, role playing script practice. Those basically are your job description. Nowhere did it say you are excellent at paperwork, you are excellent at putting systems together, sending letters out, marketing, social media, you know, updating command. And so when you get to 30 to 40 transactions, that's when you're gonna be looking at an assistant. And so a lot of you will probably wanna hire an assistant before then, and you've always gotta look at the economic model. You have at least three or four months salary set aside. There is a training, there is a learning curve, and that's one of the problems that a lot of uh, challenging agents will have is when they are not, absolutely not, taking the time. And I, I said to an agent yesterday, I said, you gotta step back about 10 steps and put it in your schedule for the training to bring your assistant up and teach them the culture that you're the most uh, comfortable with. And then the next thing that happens is, 
is that you're building this culture with this one executive assistant. Your first hire is your most critical hire. Gary still has his first hire. Now he has about six assistants right now that I can tell. And this one assistant that he's had for from day one, and he's been in real estate like myself for almost 40 years. So I want you to hear that. Your first hire is your critical hire. Okay, so let's go to brick two now. So brick two, this is where you hire this person. This executive assistant is, an, is a person that does, that has a job description. They have a 30, 60, 90, which I'm gonna share with you because so many of us, you know, somebody wants a drink of water and we'll put a fire hose down their throat and say, here's your drink of water. And oh, by the way, you're an executive assistant and now I need you to do all of this like in two weeks. Well, I'm gonna slow you down on that because remember, it's building blocks. And there's nothing better than getting to the seventh level when you have this magnificent team and all the wheels are running and the trains are going and people are excited and happy and goals are being met. And yet it's the foundation. And so if you're listening to this call and you've got a foundation in place, question your foundation. Are these the right people on the bus? Are these the right people in this seat? Should they be in a different seat? And that's why the KPAs are so critical. There's 37, I believe, different matches now. So you can have a listing specialist, you can have a listing manager. Listing manager is an admin person, so be careful that you're not mixing the two up. You also can have a KPA on you know, a TC, a transaction coordinator. That job description is different. We'll talk about that in a minute. Phone systems. So they should, your executive assistant should be answering the phone. And here's a mind blower. You should not be giving out your cell phone to everyone. There should be a central phone. And yes, you can get a service like Ring Central to come to you at night and on the weekends, you know, things like that. So hear what I'm saying. They've got to have a clear speaking voice. They've got to be friendly. They've got to have a script. Thank you for calling Monica Reynolds office. You know, this is Stephanie, I can help you. And so that's your first, sometimes that first impression. You can't have someone that acts dead. Thanks for calling the office. Blah. No, you can't have that. So that phone voice and role playing that is critical. The phone's the cash register. All right. Now, remember, I said the executive assistant is the keeper of the culture. They're also the keeper of the customer experience. But we'll go a little bit more into that in a minute. Emails. Oh, some of you will frown on this. I say an executive assistant should be checking your emails because you should be out on appointments most of the afternoon. They should be checking your emails. They should be, you know, texting you immediately if it's what I call a money email, like come list me, you know, come write an offer. Those are critical, critical ones. And so, you know, those are the things that I teach in a class too, is that how to discern which is a critical, which is one that you escalate up to the agents, which are the ones you can handle. You know, all listing systems from A to Z, when the listing comes in, they handle everything. They make that first phone call to the, the seller and introduce themselves. Now, you as a great agent should have set a foundation that the next person that you're going to hear from is my executive assistant, Stephanie, here's her business card, you know, and so you're setting it up, you know, and then so, you know, I also teach that when that listing file comes in, that the assistant knows what I call pass the baton. They know if they're ha that the client is happy or sad that they're selling. That's a good idea because about tonality, you know, are there kids, are there dogs? Is there a dog named Tank who is a kid who has his own bedroom and watches dog TV? I mean, who are these people? And that creates the relationship and the experience. So we have something in MAPS that we've been working on the last few months, it's called RER, Relationship Experience Results. And so I teach that in assistant training also, that the relationship and the critical relationship is sometimes the assistant is speaking more to the client, which they should, once you bring the, the listing in or the, the transaction in, and then that person is the keeper of the culture, but they're also the keeper of the customer experience at a highest level. Well, they'll always be mentioning your name. They'll be saying, you know, hi, this is Stephanie. Monica asked that I call you. Do you have a minute? They're asking for permission. They're always closing with the Disneyland close. By the way, thanks for working with our team. We so appreciate your business. You know, you've got to have that person. And think about what I just said, relationship, experience, results. When you build the relationship, you have the experience that it complements the relationship, you're going to get the results. 
which is repeat business and referral business. And we know, cha-ching, when that phone rings that and they say, come list me, that is the biggest compliment, but also the best return on your investment. All right, so all closing systems from A to Z, whether it's letters that says, congratulations, your home sold, here's the next steps, whether it's calling the sign up or down, every single thing. So if you go back to your job description, what is your job description? You lead generate, you, you lead follow up, you go on appointments, you write contracts, you role play, those are dollar signs. And so when you do your 20%, 80% of the day, your business is magnificent. It blows up, it doubles, it triples, you add more people and you're on your way to the seventh level. But remember, you've got to have that right person and that person's an initiator. That person takes the bull by the horns, as they say, and, and can anticipate things and looks at things critically and says, we should change this or this makes this doesn't make sense. Why don't we tweak it here? And what about this email that we send out? You want that person, that innovator that that has some entrepreneurship also and owns that job. I tell all the assistants in training, you are the CEO of the file. You're the boss of the office. Get that agent making their lead generation calls, get them out of the office on appointments, you know, prepare them for the appointments, et cetera. It's a team. So the foundational pieces is this number one, this number two brick. At first, you gotta have your brick that you're doing your job. And number two, you are now having the business that supports bringing on an executive assistant. They, they take care of command in the database, it grows every day and it's complete, name, address, phone number, and email and they're putting in your opportunities. Every lead is in there. Had I had command and opportunities, you know, when dinosaurs were walking around, when I first got into real estate, little set of little three by five cards or little pieces of paper that were all over my desk and hoping I'd remember who was who. I mean, what an amazing thing to have an executive assistant ask you after your calls, give me all your leads. Let me put them in the opportunities. Let us set up a campaign. Let us set up a smart plan. What does all of that mean? Gosh, that's exciting, isn't it? Okay, we're moving on to brick three. All right, brick three, or excuse me, we're gonna move on. Let me talk to you about 30, 60, 90 first. So here's the biggest mistake agents make. And you've gotta set these foundational pieces. So listen to this, whether you're hiring an ISA, you're hiring a runner, you're hiring a buyer agent, uh, a showing agent, whoever you're hiring, they've gotta have a very defined 30, 60, 90. And of course, career vision can help you with all of that. This is one that I wrote for career visioning on the executive assistant. So let's be careful that the first 30 days, we set them up for success. And so the phone is absolutely critical. Learning how to handle a potential buyer seller call. I know there's scripts that are unlicensed that I share in my class and for unlicensed and there are certain things that they can't talk about, price terms, condition, et cetera, and yet, you wanna make sure that if you're not there, that's when you have someone who has role played with you to handle that potential buyer, potential seller call, potential buyer call. Thank you for calling, that's a great property. In fact, if you're interested in that property, we've got a couple of others that'll be soon come on the market, throw the hook out there. So I've got all these scripts and how they speak to them. What would it be like when you come back in the office from an appointment and here is, all the answers to the questionnaire on the seller and the buyer and your assistant knows your schedule, imagine that, and they and she set up a time for you to call them back at three o'clock to talk about their listing, their buy. What a great thing that is. That's the partnership, foundational, foundational, foundational. Answering the phone is critical. They are the first impression so many, many times. Now, database, command, has every video known to man. There's every video training on command. There's all kinds of places to get questions answered. You have a regional tech trainer. Ask your market center, who's your regional tech trainer? You can go there. Most market centers have what I call a tech ambassador that can help you with that. There are classes in most market centers. Get involved, get involved and make sure that your assistant is the owner of command. Now, should you know some things about command? Sure, I know just enough to be totally dangerous, but I don't know how to really make it work, but my assistants would, my assistants would. All right, so email campaigns, smart plans, all of those things, all in command. 
the next thing is that on the first 30 days is that I would show them how to properly do a pre-list package, um, do data entry, MLS entry, uh, crop of photo, all of these things. And here's your tip, setting these foundational pieces. If you are going to be the person teaching, get your little iPhone or Android or whatever, and your, your assistant that you're training, put it on a little tripod or somebody hold it up, and you record the whole thing and you build a, a YouTube training channel or on your Google doc somewhere, put it, put it in there that you've got a training um, modules. And so you're not repeating yourself over and over again. And when you hire the next person to take that job, they can listen to those things. So those are the little tidbits on building some really, really strong foundations. Now start putting your questions in the question box and I'm gonna go pretty fast here now. So everything on listings, now, next slide, you'll go into the 60 days. Remember, you don't go past 30 days, and it might take 45 to get it all done. You gotta go back and repeat yourself on a couple of things, but you don't go past the first 30 days. 60 days is the closing files, managing repairs. They can't negotiate, they can manage repairs. They can't negotiate unless they're licensed. And I'm all about them getting licensed. And the other thing that I think is critical is that they are, you know, these are things that I teach is that I give scripts for them to call a, a person who's under contract every single day. These people, especially the sellers, have paid six or seven percent of the value of their home. They deserve that Ritz Carlton treatment. I have the scripts on the listings. I say call every day, too, especially in this fast paced uh, world. And now they're starting to slow down. I still say call every day. I have 21 days of scripts for each one of them you're building this customer experience. You want them to leave going, wow, these people are amazing. Tracking numbers and sources of business would be also in that 60 days. Appointment set, listings taken, listings under contract. Command does a lot of that. I have a lot of spreadsheets that I use that I share in the training. Lead generation systems, maybe support one. It could be the just listed letter, which I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, let's go to 90 days, Steph, real quick. So on 90 days, with this, all marketing, all listings, all pending database, phone scripts, tracking numbers, goal monitoring, 15th protocol of the month, making sure that you're on track with tracking the number. So if at the 15th, you're supposed to take four listings, you're only taking one, you guys brainstorm, mastermind what it's gonna take to get those next three and possibly assisting with one lead generation system. So each category is signed off, 30, 60, 90. All right, so let's go to our next brick. Okay, so when do you go to this brick? You know, this is when you are at 45 plus transactions. And okay, so I'm still on brick two here. So that these are all the things that I just said that you have to have, your executive assistant has to have some ownership of this. And this ownership is critical because when you hire the next assistant, some of these are gonna peel off. So let's go to brick three now. Brick three is when you're doing 45 plus transactions. You're on your way strong to 75. One of the lead generation systems that I shared with you, and don't get frustrated, you're gonna get a copy of this PowerPoint. This is a great customer service experience letter where you are saying as an agent at the listing presentation, if you're an assistant listening to this, take it to your agent and say, we have a unique way to market your home to your neighbors. Many times a neighbor, or a friend of a neighbor or a family member may be interested in purchasing in the area. We are your neighbors who live at blank blank. So I would say to a seller, I'm gonna describe your house, I'm gonna describe a little bit about you, I'm gonna send this letter out because who doesn't look in the mailbox and say, what, I have a letter from my neighbor? What is this about? Versus, oh, here's another advertisement from Monica Reynolds, a real estate agent. No, it's a letter in a white envelope with, uh, you know, the return address is the seller. You don't have anything Keller Williams in there, but they're mentioning who you are and they have your business card inside the letter. We're your neighbors. I own the house on the corner with the red door of a German shepherd. My wife and I've lived here for seven years. Our kids go to metal school. We're moving, we're so sad. You know, here, can I ask you a favor? If you know of anyone, please contact my agent. Now that is a lead generation system. And when we get back to door knocking, it's a great door knocking thing too. All right, next slide, moving on. So the next slide here is brick three. So you have your executive assistant and in that profile, is that executive assistant strong suit listing manager or TC? 
They're not a director of operations yet. That's a whole nother number five and six coming up. Okay, so we're just laying these, these small pieces first so that you look at your foundation. Because if you have cracks or you have the wrong people on your foundation, you can't build the house. All right, so you divide the job up, in my personal opinion. When people say that I do contract to close, I go, oh, interesting. And I say to myself, I've done this for almost 40 years. That never worked for me because the listing manager, to me, has a lot of S, has a little bit of I, and a lot of, you know, friendliness is what I'm trying to say. They are friendly, they're personable, they're helpful. That TC, they gotta have a lot of high C in them. They gotta cross the T's, dot the I's, clean up my mess as a high D real estate agent and keep things on track and precise. So there's two different personality styles. The systems have to be impeccable and they're looking to get one review and one referral from each current client. That's role playing. That's role-playing situations. I like that TC to be licensed. I never handled repairs unless it was something that came up that was like huge that nobody knew about or one of those the seller forgot to mention about the mold and the back garage, whatever, you know. And so I get involved in those. But other than that, my trained TC handled all that for me. I stayed in my lane lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments, writing contracts. That's my lane, right? Role playing. So again, you know, it's always important, you know, that the scripts and, and I go through so many scripts in the training. Thank you for working with our team. We so appreciate your business. May I ask you a favor? Our business is based on referrals from great people like you. Who do you know right now is thinking about buying or selling? So I go through, you know, Mike Hicks, H-I-C-K-S. You can go on YouTube and find his his script, but I've got all the scripts for the assistant. I've got the scripts for the agent on the promise. And my goal is to teach your assistant to get one referral out of every single client during the listing or the sale or during the listing and the sale, depending on, on how that goes. All right, so you're doing 75 plus transactions. Who do you hire next? Let's go to this. Now, here's where people make a mistake. They hire one assistant, they go get a buyer agent. No, 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 no. You want a buyer showing partner, okay? And a buyer showing partner, you know, in order to bring that person on, you should have five strong lead generation sources. Maybe it's Facebook ads, maybe it's your database. Whatever it happens to be, you should have five sources to support that buyer showing agent. You should never go on show another buyer as long as you, you have a team you're building. You have a team value proposition, which I'll show you here in a minute, scripts and role play. And you have a growth plan to take that buyer agent from a showing partner assistant, you know, so Stephanie, I should say buyer showing partner assistant. We take that person and we move them into a buyer agent at some point. And so the script is really simple. So when I would meet someone who wanted to buy a property, I say, I have a professionally trained, you know, uh, partner who shows property. They're very knowledgeable in the area. They will show you the property. My job is to write the contract. My job is to negotiate the contract. And the, my you know, partner, you know, Aaron, will show you the property. He can answer pro questions about school, location of where Starbucks is, very knowledgeable. So you are going to take yourself as you build a seventh level out of the buying situation, even if it's a seller who wants to buy a house. You cast that off who you're showing partner. And I always like the word showing partner. Okay, start to put some of your questions in the chat box, so we're getting there. Okay, so let me show you assessment of team worth wall of value. You wanna take your time to hire this showing partner. I like a high eye. They're great, they're fun, and they're great to show property. And I like a high eye buyer showing partner. And when I show them the value that we bring, and, you know, don't be daunted by some of these things because we had radio and television and things like that that we did. So when when you look at this and the coaching that we would do, so, you know, you're a coach on this call. If you're an assistant, you're a coach. you got a family, you're a coach. You're always sharing and teaching people. You're coaching them, right? And so everybody's a coach on this call. So when we would bring someone on our team, I would coach the agents. And one of my assistants, sometimes Stephanie, would coach the new admin. 
And so we provided that very concentrated coaching half hour that was strictly coaching on how to be the best at their particular job with accountability, things that they were doing, et cetera. The other things is, is that when you're bringing on a buyer showing partner, what are some of the things that you provide? You know, whether it's Zillow or Boomtown at the time, you know, command training. What are some of the things, open house signs? What are some of the things that you provide and put a value to that? Um, I did this form, my value proposition, because a buyer agent came in very talented and said, well, what are you going to do for me? And I went, whoa, whoa. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't have this. I have this down in my head and I can spit it out. I need to put this on paper. So this is where this came from. All right. Put your questions in there. So let me just recap a couple of things. So one of the things that you want to hear, go ahead to the next slide, Stephanie is that you have to have the right EA. That person then hires the next person who works underneath them. So you as a single agent don't have the, the listing manager and the TC speaking to you. One of them is on top, okay? So you only have one admin talking to you. Then you hire a showing partner. A lot of people make a mistake and hire that buyer agent too soon. They hire that buyer agent who has not been trained properly to show property. They have not been, they didn't, um, what I call shadow you. They didn't learn how to negotiate a contract properly. They didn't know how to write a contract properly. Remember, you want to bring them on in as a showing partner. Even if they've been in the business for a while, you want to create that same culture, that same feeling of how you handle things. All right, so to answer some quick questions, obviously there is a pro program coming up and um, I think the program, I'm, uh, Stephanie, better look for me. I think it starts on August 14th, I think, something like that. Or excuse me, August, October 14th. There are three calls and per month. The first call is for the agents only. Or, excuse me, October 13th. Go back to the other screen, Stephanie, thanks. So three calls per month. The first call is for agents only. I teach you how to be a great boss. I teach you what's going to happen in the course so that you can also, you know, set expectations with your assistants. There are 18 calls. You'll get a 450 page policy and procedures manual each week. You will get a section of that anywhere from 25 to 50 pages. I wrote the book on systems. I've coached more agents and assistants than anyone in the country. If I didn't write it, I stole it from someone and I made it better. So you're going to have the best systems, take you out of the learning curve. You don't need to worry about, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel. You've got to have systems that are duplicatable and scalable. This next session will be a Zoom call. And so I'm going to ask most attendees to put their camera on because now I can see your assistants and really interact with them. And I can see you too and make sure that no one's, you know, making breakfast or lunch while we're talking. Nobody do that, right? And so it's going to be great. It's going to be more interactive when we've made some big changes to the program. So if you've been before, come on back. All right, so the next slide, Stephanie. Then we'll open it up for some quick questions. And I know we're going to go over a little bit. I knew we would. So with that said, um, the program is $199 a month for six months uh, each month. And if you put web 100, you can save $100. If you go to mapscoaching.com slash group, you'll find the perfect real estate assistant. Love for you to join. All right, Steph, read me a couple of good questions and I'll handle them. Okay, Monica. So the first one is an aha, and that is from um, Georgia. And she says, making videos for training when hiring that next person. What a great way to create that rock solid foundation. Yeah, and you know, and then here's my other thing, Georgia, don't do any more than five minute clips, like then stop it, or a three minute clip, and then you're going to put it in a library that your assistant's going to organize for you. So it might be listings, and then it'll be photo, and it'll be cropping, and it'll be different things. So if you make a 30 minute one, it's too long for somebody to find exactly what they're looking for. So, cry. so make sure you do, you know, a three minute or a five minute and stop the tape and say, okay, all right, the next thing we're going to talk about is this. So start the video again and have your assistant organize it nice and neat. That training video is so great. In fact, in our next class, Stephanie, we've got a list of training videos that we're going to give the, everyone as suggestions and how long each one should be so that you can build your own training library. 
instead of repeating yourself 150 times. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. Now, when your listing manager brings on, say, a TC that works for them, then they're going to be doing that and doing an additional video. So those videos can change and improve, but remember, keep them short and sweet. Next question, please. Okay, Monica, Katie says, I currently hire an outside TC that works on my files. If I hire an admin, would I still have a TC do some of the transactions at the beginning of the process? I don't know your uh, production level. And so for me, a T, an outside TC can do what I call some of the basic things. It's hard for a TC that does other TC work to build a relationship. So I want you to go back and listen to what I said, relationship experience results. An outside TC normally isn't asking for, you know, them to go to Zillow and give you a great, you know, a great rating or whatever, you know, realtor.com. They usually aren't asking for referrals. And so if you've got the production, I'd love for you to look at bringing in an in-house assistant to do all of those things transition slowly the TC one, because remember the first 30 days is about listings, the phone and database. So again, everyone, this is a basic conversation today where people make the biggest mistake is putting these four bricks in place, these foundational pieces. And when you've got the wrong person on one of those bricks, you're gonna have a wobbly foundation. So, so listening to me right now, be very careful. In, you know, virtuals can work fine. I have not seen them um, if they do other TC work for other agents that they are dedicated to the repeat and referral business or the relationship. They're not building relationships. And they're probably not saying, Monica asked that I call you as part of our customer service. Do you have a couple of minutes? And oh, by the way, thanks for working with our team. We so appreciate your business. Oh, can I ask you one favor? Who do you know right now is thinking about buying or selling? We love referrals. They're not doing that. Okay, next question. Okay, so Monica, um, a couple of questions about personality styles. Um, could you kindly elaborate again on the difference in the, in the skill set and person, more personality between the TC and listing manager and then what personality type am I looking for for the executive assistant? You know, the executive assistant in my world has to be someone, you know, that, that's versatile. So Stephanie on this call has a D personality. However, she's very versatile. She has versatility. She's an S, she's an I, she's a D. So she's pretty level across. So you can hire whoever you want for an executive assistant. I veer away from a high I as an executive assistant because I'm a, a triple D and I need things done yesterday. I don't like to repeat myself. I get frustrated if I have to keep talking about the same thing. And so I need someone who's fast paced, action can keep up with me. So for me, I need someone that's got a C, a strong C because I have messes and they have to clean up behind me and an S. But I also need that D that's strong enough to say, hey, here's what you need to do. Or hey, what about this? Or what about that? So I need a versatile assistant and an executive assistant. It's very away from the eyes. I really need a strong C. So the executive is, is versatility. And I teach all the assistants that you wanna develop versatility. You wanna to listen to the person you're talking to. So if you've got an art teacher that's selling their house and they're a high I, you better bring it. Hey, how's your day? How are you? If you've got a C, an engineer, hi, Mr. Johnson, do you have a minute? Great, I didn't wanna interrupt you. I know you're super busy. I've got three things really quickly to tell you. And then you go, you know, so, it's different how you talk to different people. Now, in my world, a listing manager is a high S because it's the personality, it's the relationships, it's the kindness that comes through. And I like the, the S and the C in a listing manager. Um, a little bit of I is fine. I like an I as a buyer agent. When it comes to a TC, C, C, C. Don't make a mistake have impeccable files, have impeccable follow-up, have everything in a schedule, have all kinds of you know Google Docs and spreadsheets and Excel spreadsheets and command and everything is whistle. You know, they, they make the trains run on time. They make the trains run on time and I need to count on them that they hit those deadlines 
and that they're anticipating problems. So that's a C personality that's questioning, looking, and crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Hope that helped. Okay, what's next, Steph? Okay, so Sabrina says, as an EA, should I be the one answering the phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week? No, not unless you're paid. So Sabrina, you should answer the phone during office hours. And then you and your agent talk about after hours. They're usually questions for the agent or potential buyer sellers. So work that out with your agent. In my world, the assistant does not answer after hours. And so there's a thing called Ring Central where that office line goes then to the agent's cell phone. I, that's what we use. Now, the other thing that I think is important is that you as the assistant should do, that's why I do the training where you make a call every single day to the listing, every single day to the pending file. You're proactive so that there's no calls at night. There's no calls on the weekends. So if you're getting calls from listings or buyers or sellers about contracts and what's going on, then you're not getting ahead of it and you're not delivering the level of customer experience that they need. If you over communicate, they don't call. They trust you, you build the trust bridge. So make sure you're making those calls. And if you're only gonna make a couple of calls a week, make calls on a Monday and a Thursday. And on Thursday, if you don't get them, call them Friday morning to make sure that they're not gonna call you on the weekend or call you at night. And never as an assistant who is an employee, give your cell phone out to your clients. If you do, don't answer it over the weekend because then you're teaching them that they can call you 24 seven. There you have it. Okay, that's the way I roll. Agents do it differently. All right, thank you. What else, Steph? Okay, so how do you compensate the executive assistant and the showing partner? Why don't you follow the model? That would be a good idea, right? So I don't get into these compensation things until I get the agents only on the call because I don't want everyone to go back and blow the phones up and then everybody calls Gary and says, Monica Reynolds said this. So let me be really clear. An executive assistant should be paid a salary that is fair for your area. If you're in San Diego, California, the average sales price is 850,000 and the cost of living is totally different than it is in Mississippi or Louisiana or Kentucky then that's a different ball game. So it's a fair salary, okay? I believe in paying the assistant bonuses after 90 days. You can start with $25, $50. And I always say to an assistant, your salary never changes, but I pay you bonuses. And then the bonuses once a year we look at. So every closing, they would get paid a bonus. Now, the next thing is, is that I everyone on my team will be paid a referral fee. So if they're licensed, they'll get a referral fee, an assistant. If they're not licensed, they can still get a January, February bonus. It won't be as big as a referral fee because they're not licensed yet, but it'll be a, be a bonus. Um, the showing partner, if you follow the model, gets 10 or 15% of the commission is a showing partner following the model, 10 or 15%. I'm not a big proponent of paying per door or paying per hour. I think if you bring on a showing partner, and they have a growth plan to grow into a buyer agent that you pay them a percentage of, of the commissions of the property. If they show one house or 20 houses to that guy, they still get that same commission. Good question. And I, I try to speak broadly so nobody gets mad and emails Gary. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, is the new course, uh, is this course better for the new hire admin or the rainmaker? You know, that's a great question. This course is for the rainmaker. This course is for the admin. So there is one call a month for the rainmaker only. I teach you how to be a great boss. I teach you the systems that are going to go into place this month so that you can help your assistant be accountable so that you and your assistant can have great quality conversations about moving the business forward and what's going to be implemented. So call two and three of each month is for the admin only. The calls will be a Zoom call, so nobody's going to be able to multitask and answer phone calls and, and be on the call because we'll catch them and we'll probably say something. Can't imagine I'd do that, would you? And then so we've got really an interactive call coming up. We've changed some of the materials. We've got a bunch of new stuff. So if you've been before, come again. So thank you for the questions for the Rainmaker and it's for the admin both. 
That way you're building a team, you're building your culture, you're building your systems. If I talk to your assistant, you don't know what I just said and what they should be doing and how the, your assistant shows up on these calls and what they put into place. Will that give you a clue if you've got the right foundational piece? I think so. Great investment, great investment, so sign up. All right, what's next, Steph? Could you please tell us the benefits of a licensed assistant? Oh my gosh, yes. They can negotiate contracts. Stephanie, it's true. 10 years that you and I worked together, I never negotiated one contract, did I? Not one. I'm terrible. After 40 years in business, somebody says, oh my God, you forgot the refrigerator. I go, good, I'll just buy one, sign the contract. I was terrible at it. I couldn't do it anymore. I mean, I didn't like the game. My assistant, Charlie, was so great at it. Stephanie did it for a while too. They were great negotiators. They did the renegotiations of repairs. Now, did I teach them? Did I show them how to do it right? And they listened to me and I role played it with them. But more importantly, I recorded every single negotiation I did. Charlie stood next to me and I showed him how to do it. Now, what's great about that, guys, is that now you've got an assistant who will do a better job than you in negotiating contracts. And the script is this. Hi, this is Charlie. Monica asked that I call you. Great news. We have a we have a, an offer on your property. You have a couple of minutes. Monica and I sat down and we reviewed the contract together and Monica has some suggestions. So now it's coming that way, Adam, versus, well, here's what I think you should do. And I think you should do this. No, Monica suggests this. And when they say, well, we don't want to do that. And, and then Charlie would say, well, Monica was really clear that this is a really something for you to consider. Can I call you back in 30 minutes and you guys talk about it? Monica was really clear that you have you should really consider this. It works great. A licensed person can talk about price, terms, condition. When you're out of town, they can go sign a contract for you. They can go get a listing on the market and get a signature. You're out of town, they're not licensed, they're not doing anything for you. Watch out. There's a licensing police out there, your competitors looking to see for you to goof up. So remember, they can talk about price terms and conditions of a contract. They can negotiate all your contracts and plus play it safe, play it safe. So let me give you a quick tip. I hire talent first and if they're not licensed, then I will say, I would love for you to consider getting licensed in the future. I hire talent first. I don't hire the license first, I hire talent. And in that I say, I'm going to pay for this asset that you're gonna to attach to your name now as a realtor. And if I don't have use of one year of your license because you quit or I fired you, you're gonna pay me back the licensing fees, the what it costs to license, all the things you had to go through, and um, you'll pay me back your last couple of checks as you leave. So they signed that and it was fine. I got use of everybody's license, I never had a problem because they now have an asset that's attached to their name. Okay, next question, Steph. Okay, so the next one is, um, I've had assistants over the years and have always hired people who had some real estate background. I just hired someone who has no real estate experience, but was a school secretary and very systems oriented. Starting training from scratch, we signed up for the perfect real estate assistant course. Um, and I feel like, would you agree that learning the contract and addendums should come in the first 90 days since she's new to real estate? I mean, the first 30 days since she's new yeah, to real estate. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. Um, and here's one of the things that I teach. In that first 30 days, they should, I mean, the first day on the job, whenever I was busy and I had to go on an appointment, I said, okay, read the contract 10 times. And when I come back, I'm gonna have you explain the contract to me. And then I'm going to give you a scenario. I'm Bill Johnson, I'm listing my house for 329,000. I'm excluding the refrigerator and the washer and the dryer. And da, 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 I don't wanna sign, I don't want this, I don't want that, now write the contract. So I make them read it, explain it to me, and then write out a contract. So yes, they should do that. And there's so many agents on this call who've never read a whole contract word for word. But my assistants did. They knew what to look for. They knew where the missing blanks were because Monica Reynolds had a few missing blanks all the time. It's just the way it happened. No matter if they put stickers, arrows, whatever, I still missed it, whatever. Just how I roll. Okay, what's next? Okay, so do the agent and the executive assistant need to sign up for the course separately or do they share an account? No, bargain. 
$199 a month. You got one agent, you got two assistants, it doesn't matter, one price for all, okay? Now here's the other good news. The course is six months. You end up with the 450 page policy and procedures manual. I go through communication, job description, schedule. I give the assistant the schedule, imagine that. Um, we go through lead generation, listings, pendings, numbers, goal setting, the whole thing. And it's after six months, it's online and all the recordings for, for 60 days after that. So after the first class, you can listen to it over and over again. And 60 days when the class is over, you still got access to that material. Steph, what's X? Perfect. Okay. So next is, if you are not a consistent 30 to 40 transactions a year, would you recommend focusing on transactions rather than an executive assistant? Well, sometimes I don't know the price point. And so when a luxury person comes to me and says, I sold five houses and I made $150,000, I went, okay, good. And so tell me about your savings. Tell me about your economic model. Do you feel that you can hire a part-time assistant? So listen to this, listen to this. If you hired an assistant at $15 an hour, which may be top in your market for a pretty good one, 20 hours a week, okay? 20 times 15 is 300, times four weeks a month, that's $1,200. Your average commission is 5,000. 20 hours back in your world to do lead generation, to do lead generation, or maybe have a little bit of time to think about your business or a little bit more time to maybe work on a Facebook ad or a little bit more time to go back and do lead follow-up or maybe a little bit more time for your family, keep them happy. If you had eight, wait 80 hours back each month for $1,200, if you follow the systems, you can have at least three more transactions, minimum, probably one a week if you really paid attention. So that $1,200, if your commission is $5,000 or $10,000 or $20,000, that's a hell of a return. So step up and make that, that courageous commitment. That's what I had to do. I was a single mom with three kids. And the last thing I thought about, and I told this mentor of mine, I said, I don't need another mouth to feed. I got plenty. I got plenty and two dogs to take care of. And they said, you know, you need to do this and you'll change your world. So I was doing about 75 transactions by myself, blew up a marriage hardly saw my kids, hired that assistant. It was unbelievable. My world changed and I went to 125 transactions the next year, 200 the year after that. And that was in the early 80s. So that's why I wrote the books on assistants before anybody else did. All right, what else, Steph? Okay, so is it important if you early hire a manager because you do not plan on or want to be actively involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business, or would your executive assistant be able to run it day to day for you? Well, the executive assistant can run the day to day business. I'm not sure what a manager does. Does it, are they doing all the listings, all of the, the tracking of numbers? Are they doing the pendings? Are they doing the hiring and training? So a manager to me is somebody who's in charge of the P&L, the hiring and the training and oversees the assistants. That's a director of operations. So if you're, if you're looking at this, and that's why we had this call today, get these foundational pieces. Right now, you can call them a manager if you want, but it sounds to me like you have an executive assistant who does the marketing, the listings, the pendings. And when it comes to hiring, they're gonna hire the next assistant. They're gonna hire the showing agent. They're gonna hire the buyer agent. They're gonna hire the ISA as you grow. They're gonna hire your field coordinator, your first impression person. You know, they're going to hire all of these people, your marketing, social media people after you start to grow. So that person has to be a real key person. And you can have an EA right now that may not be that key person, but at least they're great at listings or they're great at pendings. And then you're going to maybe hire a director operations manager. That makes sense. Good question. High level. All right. Next question, Steph. What would be the difference between hiring a buyer agent or the buyer showing assistant? Well, there's, okay. So in Gary's MREA book, which I am not going to go against, and, and the reason is, is that as an agent, you own both of those jobs when you start to build your foundations to build a seventh level team. 
So the one you want to peel off that takes the most time is working with buyers. And so you want to have someone show the property for you. You're still staying in control of the buyers. Now, if you go ahead and you hire a buyer agent right off the bat, then that buyer agent, have you trained them properly? Have they learned how to show property? Have they know how to write a contract? Is that the culture, are they bringing in a different culture if they're a seasoned agent? What are they doing wrong that may not be in agreement with you? They may be doing a lot of things right, which is great. So remember, you always start per Gary's MREA book. You know, don't, let's not change the system. That's a showing partner. Now that showing partner can grow into a, a buyer agent, you know, 30 days later. But make sure you've got the right fit, that they're culturally handling your clients correctly. Have them shadow you on a couple of buyer appointments. Can you spin them off faster than 30 days? Maybe, but be careful. You want to make sure that they're rock solid on how they return a phone call on a buyer. They're rock solid on knowing the inventory. They're rock solid on knowing the community. They're rock solid on the school districts. You don't want someone out there representing you go, I don't really know what school district this is. And, you know, I don't know about those power lines. I don't know if those are ever going to go on ground. I mean, they got to know stuff. They represent you. So that's why I said at least 30 days. Okay. All right. Hopefully that answered it. What's next, Steph? How does the 30, 60, 90 apply when being hired, when someone is being hired as a part-time assistant? Same way, but maybe the 30 turns into 60 days and the 60 turns into 120 days. So when you're hiring someone part-time, they're not going to probably, if they're coming into your office, they're probably going to answer the phone. They can do the database. They'll do some of the listing. So it's not going to be um, depending on the volume of business. So if you have someone part-time, what are you going to zero in on? So if I had someone part-time coming in, they need to learn to answer the phone while they're there. They need to learn the database and they need to learn how to process the listing. So depending on the volume, you might teach them how to put a pre-list package together and to set up a listing file. They may not be talking to the client because they're not there all the time to answer the phone when the client calls back or whatever. So you got to, you know, strategically look at it with common sense. What are the first things that they need to learn? The phone's a cash register. If they're going to pick up the phone, hopefully while they're there, teach them how that's done. Work on command. Make sure they learn that. Putting smart plans together. Put your pre-list package together. So you're going to piece that out. It's going to take more than 30 days to be proficient on all of those things. Okay. All right. What's next? How do you monitor an executive assistant's performance to ensure honest feedback from staff and clients that they interact with? Well, I guess it goes back to the client reviews, and it also goes back to at the end of every transaction, I will share a system with you where you get 100% uh, reviews back on how the transaction went, how your assistant performed. So we have systems that you will get that feedback. You always want to get that feedback. And plus, one of the things in the, the script, the promise script, is the assistant is that you've set it up, and then the assistant is saying, so on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel we are, how do you feel your experience has been with us so far? You have the assistant ask, you're asking, hey, John, I know you've been speaking to my assistant, Stephanie, I wanted to touch base with you, blah, 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 blah. Oh, by the way, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how has your customer experience been with us? A seven, ouch, tell me what's going on. What can we do better? Because I want to make sure we're at 12. So you ask. And then we have we have letters that go out. We have things they can fill out. Starbucks card if you do this. I've got those, but the best way is to just call your client and ask them to be honest with you that you want to grow your business to be the top number one you know uh, team in the the city. So let's take a couple more, Stephanie. To, and I know everybody's still hanging on the call, which is great. Sign up for the perfect real estate assistant mapscoaching.com/group. Put your web 100 in there and save $100. Okay, Steph, what's the next question? Okay, and to that end, do you have to be a Keller Williams agent in order to take this course? No, this is one of our great opportunities for you to experience the Keller Williams world. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure. You can absolutely sign up. Thank you for signing up. Okay, who's next? How do we keep 
an assistant from becoming irreplaceable or does that matter? You want your assistant to be irreplaceable. You want your assistant to never want to leave you. And there are ways to do that. So, you know, without getting into a long, long thing of, of painting the picture and growth. So if you have an assistant who's stellar, where's the bench that they can go to? Can they become a director of operations? Can they become a recruiter for you? Can they become a listing agent? Can they become a buyer agent? So the possibilities are limitless. And so one of the things <clears throat> that I talked to assistants about, <clears throat> excuse me, is building their downline and profit share. When you help your assistant do that and they become part of the team and they become getting a small check and a good size check and a nice check every single month, you know, and then there's bonuses paid, paid to them based on the number of deals you do. There's a way to keep someone who's irreplaceable. They should not ever want to leave you when you've built a community and an environment that supports them in growth and it supports them financially growing also. Just my thoughts. I have a great plan for that. All right. What's next, Steph? One more. Okay. Two more quick questions. Does it make sense for me as an agent to participate before I have hired an executive assistant? Thank you for answering that. Normally I say, yet yeah, I answer that. 30% of everyone on the call is an agent who needs the systems to put some foundational pieces in before they hire. And then there is a lot of agents who don't have any systems at all uh, and bring their new assistant on just to build those. So. If you do not have an assistant, you want the systems, and I do a complete hiring process. I am compliment the career visioning, but I have a very clear hiring process that really drills down fast so that you can hire through the career visioning process, you know, not at a record pace, but at a good pace. And so I go through that with you, what the hiring process that I've had for 40 years. Okay, what else, Steph? One more. Okay, so this is um, this has been a super helpful overview. I'm planning to take career visioning next. My only question is how this would look slightly different with a husband and wife team. My husband and I work together and at, at the point of hiring our first assistant, we are both in production. Okay, my suggestion is <clears throat> when a husband and a wife work together, it didn't work for me, but it could work for you. All right, here's what I'm going to suggest that one of you is in production is also in charge of the office and then you have what i call the racehorse so whoever is doing the most production out there or you divide the duties up one person is in charge of the listing manager one person is in charge of the closing manager the tc or you divide i'm in charge of social media you're in charge of these processes you have to have a very clear lane when there's two of you in the office they call two peacocks in the office you got to make sure each one of you have your own lane to stay in so without talking to you at length and really finding out what is your strength are you better at, uh, at managing the office and going out and taking listings or is your husband whoever it happens to be so you've got to and then get a clear clear lanes that you're going to stay in and then stay in those lanes stay in those lanes all right good Hey everyone, thanks for staying on the call. I know I went way over, but when I have great questions, I love to answer them. Please sign up. I'm excited to talk to you guys. I've got a lot of COVID things that we put in there. We're gonna have COVID for a while. And I really look forward to talking to you. Again, it's October 13th is our launch. Look forward to having you on the calls. Thanks everyone. Glad you enjoyed the call. You get a copy of this and of the PowerPoint. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, Angel. Bye.